What you guys got another video? Is this the best Windows utility for Windows 11? Now we all know that Windows 11 comes with plenty of bloat and settings that you have to go through and change like all these privacy settings. And yes, you can do this in group policy and you can use scripts and other things like that. But some people just want something nice and simple to be able to tweak their operating system to the way they like it. Now, I'm going to show you a really cool little program that you can use, which will change a lot of these settings to the way you want them without causing too many problems. It's called Windows 11 Fixer, and uh, you can download it from GitHub, and I'll leave a link on my website for you to be able to download this. So you can see Windows 11 Fixer is a program designed to make customizing your Windows 11 as easy as possible. Windows 11 Fixer provides one easy to use location to customize Windows 11. You can change a large amount of Windows settings, including security settings, uninstall undesired Windows software, and install most of the programs you want and you need. So that is Windows 11 Fixer. We're gonna take a look at it. They do have a portable version and a light version here. It is free to use. And what we'll do is we'll take a good look at how we can get this onto the system and how you can use it. Now, of course, with any type of program like this, there's always gonna be a risk because obviously you're making major changes to the system. But with this one, I think it's just basically changing a lot of the annoying settings that you have to go through and change manually yourself every single time you uh, install Windows. So this will speed the process up. So you can see here, we've downloaded the portable version here and I'll unzip this and get it extracted onto my desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on this program here and drag it to my desktop and we can unpack it right here. Let's go ahead and right click and extract all. And this should extract it and put it into a folder onto your desktop. Now, like I said, there's many different programs that do exactly what this does, but I think this one is pretty polished and pretty nice. So we're going to go into the data here and you can see Windows 11 Fixer. So we're going to run this as administrator, say yes and run this. And this is the actual Windows 11 Fixer program. As you can see, very simple to use. Now, before you use this, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer that doing this is at your own risk. I'm not responsible for any loss of data or damage to your PC. So tweaking PCs can break the operating system and force you to have to reinstall Windows. And again, you can pause that and read that at your own leisure. So let's go ahead and quickly click on the light or dark theme on the top right, which is a nice added touch. I'm going to leave it on dark for this video. And we can work through uh, the fixed windows part here, which is on the taskbar. It's nicely categorized here to make it easy. So the location of it, you can either have it no change, left or center. Now, of course, this is not going to break windows at all. This is just telling it to put it to the left. And you can do that within Windows, but this is all in one program. You can change the size of it to small, medium, or large. So we'll go ahead and select one of these, and we can move on to the next setting. So let's go ahead and put small here. Widgets button. If you don't like the widgets, you can just disable them by just putting that on inside the uh, disable part here. The chat button, if you don't want that on there either, just put the radio button inside disable, and you're good to go. Keyboard switcher, I'm going to leave that don't change, but you've got it as hidden and visible. Moving on down to files and folders and options. Inside this section, we can uh, make hidden folders visible or we can hide them. And we can also known file types. We can make this visible. And as you can see so far, the settings here are not going to break windows. These are just to make things visible or hide them or have no change. Shortcut icons, you can also make changes here and use check mark boxes to select items. Let's move on to the right click context menu here. We can use the Windows 10 style if we wish. We can also add, take ownership to our right click context menu, as well as control panel shortcuts, restart Windows Explorer shortcut. And you can add whatever you like inside here by just putting the radio button in some of these options available. Toggle the camera and microphone shortcut here. If you wanna add that in, you can do. Uh, setting shortcuts, uh, disk cleanup shortcut, and batch file and new file options. And also we have task manager shortcut as well. So just put the radio buttons in the ones that you want. Also moving on up to the top right hand side, we have file explorer. 
compact view, and we also have opening location, this PC, and we can also do the start menu and change this as well. And we have other, which is for your Windows uh, to search online. We can put this to prohibit and uh, also disable and also allow screensavers. If you want to stop that, you can do or allow those entirely up to you what you want to do. So let me go ahead and make some final changes and we'll click enable and we'll click run here and you'll see a bunch of boxes popping up. And also there's another registry file that wants to make a change there. And now we can restart the PC. So let's quickly restart the PC. And that is the first section done for the Windows 11 fixer tool. And we'll move on to the next section so we can take a look there. Now you need to do these in sections, otherwise uh, they just reset themselves if you change on to the next section. And you can see those uh, settings have now been put in place. It looks a lot nicer, uh, but we haven't finished yet. So let's go into the Windows settings now. And this is where you can change system settings. So notifications, you can disable all these. Storage sense, you can have those enabled or disabled. Clipboard, uh, personalized settings. Again, Windows themes, dark, dark, and also transparency effects. I'm going to have these set. And going on down into the start area, show uh, recently opened items. I want to disable that. And gaming mode, you can leave that no change or disable or enable it, depending on what you want. Search permissions coming down here. You can have this as moderate, strict, or off, or whatever you like. Diagnostic and feedback, we all know that no one likes that. So we're going to disable all those and put that to feedback frequency never. And again, you can just select what you like here manually, or I'll show you another way which you can do it. Now, inking and typing is to do with telemetry. Speech is to do with telemetry. And also under general, these are all your personalized ads that Microsoft want to enforce on you. So you can disable all those. App permissions, again, these are in your privacy and security section. You can disable which ones of these you'd like uh, to disable, or you can enable certain ones like microphone and camera if you want to. And this will just disable all of these in one go. You don't have to mess around. Now you can see I'm doing this manually at the moment, and I will show you how to do this with the automated options up the top of the screen. So I'm going to go through here and just disable all this stuff because basically people on Windows 11 Home uh, will have to do this manually because obviously they don't have group policy editor. So once you've got all of this set, we can change the settings. But up the top here, I just want to show you here, select recommended privacy and security settings. You've put the check mark in there. It's going to basically select the most common ones that people will use, and it will leave the ones that mainly people might want to use, like uh, camera access, microphone access. It will leave those enabled. And you can go in and personalize this to your liking, or you can just use the presets up the top. Now, once you've done that, select your settings and restart your PC, and that will make those changes. Let's move on to the uninstall Microsoft bloat section. This is to remove all of the applications that come inside Windows that you don't require. For instance, Microsoft To Do, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Solitaire. Now, if you need any of these, then don't uninstall them. But if you don't want them on the system, you can go ahead and uninstall all of this stuff to lighten the load of Windows. And you can see easy to uninstall software is on the right and the hard to uninstall software is on the left. Now, bear in mind that some of the ones on the left are going to be a little bit more harder to remove and a little bit more risk involved. So you may want to create a system restore point and you should be doing that anyway and you should be backing up all of your data. So let's go ahead and I've got some check marks and radio buttons inside here. I'm going to go over to the hard to uninstall section and remove some of the stuff that you don't want. So Cortana, Get Help, Maps, Microsoft Edge maybe, Photos. You might not want any of this stuff. If you do, then do not change it. Just leave as do not change or no change and you'll be perfectly fine. If you want to leave Xbox bar there, that's perfectly fine. Click uninstall software and a PowerShell uh, window will pop up. And it's just basically going to uninstall all of these. Now, remember, doing the hard to uninstall and removing these physically from the computer can obviously break your operating system. And also, there's some other risks involved, i.e. if you want to put it back, it might not go back as easy as it uh, uninstalled. That's the reason why they've called it hard to uninstall. You are physically removing this from the computer when it wasn't designed to be removed from the computer. 
So bear in mind that if you want to put something back, it might not go back as easy and you may need to do a fresh install Windows, hence the re warning sign at the beginning of the video. You are tweaking Windows at your own risk here and you are making major changes to the operating system. So bear that in mind if you're going to do all of this stuff. You have to sort of take uh, the risk factor into account here because like I said, you are physically removing uh, objects that, which aren't supposed to be removed that easily. So bear that in mind when it comes to removing key components like that, okay? So if you want to put these back, you will have to find some sort of fix or script to reinstall these, and they might not go in as easy as they uninstalled, as I've already said. Next, you can go down to the apps that are already installed here and remove some of the easier ones to uninstall, like some of the stuff here that you might not need. You can go through here and manually uninstall these yourself. Pretty straightforward and easy stuff to do. Again, this will clean up the system. If you don't want OneDrive or any of the other stuff, you can just uninstall it from the computer. Now, normally when you uninstall stuff from here, these are easily reinstalled on the system if you want to. But like I said before, uh, the risk factor is that when it says hard to uninstall, where it's not physically meant to be uninstalled, and you go ahead and uninstall that, it can cause a few problems. So bear that in mind. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and uninstall the rest of this float on here just to show you how easy it is and how it works. And again, most people are not going to want this stuff, especially people like gamers that want a really sort of lightweight system. And again, people that are running, say, for instance, an older system where they don't want to have all of this bloat on here because their system can't handle it and it's taxing out the CPU maybe and things like that. So removing all this stuff does alleviate a lot of that high CPU usage and also a lot of system usage uh, resources there. So we're going to go ahead and remove a lot of this stuff. And it's asking us to do a reboot because we're removing the remote connection. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this by restarting the PC. And this does take a bit of time. So bear that in mind. Once it restarts, it's going to remove a lot of that stuff. I'll speed this process up and we'll get back to the desktop. And we've got one more section to do on this application, which I wanted to show you here, which I think is quite useful for people that want to use one application to basically uninstall stuff, install stuff, and also make changes to the operating system without having to go off and do multiple different applications. This one application does it all for you. Okay, so let's open the application up again. And now on the last part, which is install software. You can choose to install Start All Back, Start 11, Fences 4, or 11 Clock, or you've got a bunch of other ones here like Modern Flyouts, Files, and a bunch of other things like Internet, Browsers, Audio and Video, Messaging, Streaming, and also Coding. There is all the applications that you will probably need yourself, which you use on a regular basis, and you can choose to install them uh, via this method here. Microsoft Power Toys, computer maintenance tools like Malwarebytes, CCleaner. A lot of people will use a lot of this stuff like Spotify and iTunes, Disney Plus, Netflix. Some people like to use those like Discord and uh, things like that. So I've gone ahead and uh, downloaded Start All Back here. And again, this will be a trial version. You will need to pay for a license for this because it's only about five bucks. And uh, again, this is because obviously the start menu on Windows 11 is absolute garbage and uh, it needs to be replaced. But as you can see here, you can go through here and uh, you'll be able to make your changes and get the start menu that you like and also have your context menu ribbon up the top and things like that, which you like to use on your system. Because let's face it, Windows 11 start menu is probably the worst designed start menu they've ever released. So you can choose some of the options available here. Now, Start Start 11 is also a pretty decent program, which has quite a few uh, different menus as well. This one is pretty limited for choice, but it is still a pretty decent uh, bit of software, just showing you the example what you can use. And I can honestly say, after doing all of those little tweaks there, this operating system is pretty snappy. And again, we've got it uh, running with less resources because we all know that when you install Windows on here, it always uses very high system resources in the hundreds, if not, you know, 250, 200, 
that sort of mark when you first install Windows, all of the settings have been changed by this application and they are reversible, these particular settings. It's just the uninstall feature you've got to be a bit careful of when you're doing the hard to uninstall section. Just make sure you know what you're doing there and you accept the risk when you do it. So again, some of the little settings here, you might have to go through and just have a little look, but pretty much I'm pretty sure that all of these have been uh, done perfectly fine. You can see the microphone has been left on because that's how I set it, because most people will need their microphone. But installed apps have uh, been completely stripped out. There's not a lot inside here, as you can see. And again, the same thing for default apps and, and all that sort of stuff has been completely uh, removed. A lot of stuff here. Now Again, you can go through here with a fine tooth comb and remove more if you wish. But pretty much, I think that's super lightweight and good enough for most people. And I think it's done a pretty good job, if I'm honest, uh, at removing a lot of this stuff and setting it up exactly how you like it. If you're a minimalist and you want everything set up, like your right-click context menu, and you don't want to be going off and doing a load of uh, different apps and scripts and programs and setting there for a bunch of different time, you can use this application and really use the presets and go in here and do this in literally you know, a minute or so, and it's all done. And you don't have to sit there for hours on hours going into group policy and stuff like that. You can see the processes have been reduced quite a bit down to 96. And I'm pretty sure with a bit more fettling, you could get that down even more. Utilization is pretty good as well. And again, looking at the memory side of things, that's done a pretty good job too. Now, we've only made some changes and took away a lot of the uh, bloat off of Windows. And again, this will make it a little bit better. There is some updates waiting to come, so there will be a little bit of fluctuation there. We'll need to run these updates and restart the PC a few times, and it should be perfectly fine. But again, if you're looking for something to tweak your operating system and you are a Windows tweaker and you like doing that sort of stuff, then by all means, check it, this program out. It's pretty decent. I think it's a nice little app and show your support. And they may even advance this program a bit more and add some more stuff to it because that's what it's all about at the end of the day, getting a program that is useful to some people. Not everyone's going to want to use something like this, and I completely understand that, but that doesn't mean I can't show it and uh, show you some of these programs for the people that do like them. Anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from biotechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate the support, and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.